So, two friends walk into a cafe. One says, we're the best buddies anyone can have. The other retorts, oh yeah, well, we've got the best shared secrets. But what if one of them is secretly detesting the other? Let's delve into the signs of concealed animosity and strategies to deal with it. Imagine if Sherlock Holmes and Moriarty were just two chums bickering over a crossword puzzle. Or if Thor and Loki were merely trying to outshine each other in their latest board game face-off. That's the kind of antagonism we're delving into here. Friend rivalries, my friends, are as old as human relationships, but they're not all about resentment and disputes. You see, the essence of a friend rivalry isn't about who's got the newest gadgets or who can come up with the cleverest jokes. No, it's about companionship, shared memories, and a feeling of unity. It's about those long coffee dates, the shared successes, and even the shared failures. It's like being part of a sitcom where you and your friend are the main characters and the rival friend, just the recurring guest stars who add unpredictability. Think of your friend group as the friends gang and the rival friend as Janice popping in and out. Sure, there's competition, but there's also acknowledgement. And sometimes, uh, just sometimes, that rivalry can lead to the most epic reconciliations. Remember when Ross and Rachel finally put aside their differences and confessed their love. That's the power of a good friend rivalry, but let's not get it distorted. These rivalries aren't about pulling each other down. They're about motivating each other to climb higher to outperform. It's like a ceaseless game of one-upmanship where the prize is pride and the esteem of your so. The next time you're in a cafe with your friend, just remember, it's not about who's got the best jokes, it's about who's got the best tales to share. Now, having a hater can be as tricky as trying to dance the tango on a tightrope, but hold on, we've got some strategies to keep you steady and help you recognize the signals. To begin with, Communication is paramount. It's like trying to play a game of chess blindfolded. Without it, you're just making moves, hoping someone understands your intentions. So if you've got a dispute, don't simmer in silence. Air it out, have a conversation, and keep in mind you can't smooth a rough surface without creating some dust. Next, comprehend your own strengths and weaknesses. Consider yourself as a precise piece of machinery. You wouldn't try to make your coffee maker bake a cake, would you? No, you need to understand what you excel at and let that shine. So if you're a cerebral person, lean into that. If you have the charm of a cactus, perhaps steer clear of the diplomatic duties. And most, keep your sense of humor intact. Look, haters can make things heated like a scorching day in the desert, but with a touch of humor, you can diffuse the tension. It's like the lemon in your lemonade. It might sour things slightly, but it prevents the whole situation from burning up. So share a laugh, lighten up, and remember, a shared chuckle is a hater disarmed. Now you might be thinking, this sounds as tough as finding a needle in a haystack. And you're right, it's not a walk in the park, but just like that elusive needle with a bit of patience, a pinch of perseverance, and maybe a sprinkle of good old-fashioned serendipity, you'll navigate your way, and believe me, the journey is rewarding. Recall, navigating through the maze of haters is like dancing. You've got to know when to make your move, when to hold back, and when to just let loose. Unlocking the secrets of recognizing a hater is like spotting a counterfeit bill in a stack of cash. It's challenging, but oh so satisfying when you finally identify it. But what if the counterfeit bill is a sign of a hidden enemy? Let's delve into this. This process can be compared to winning a game of poker with a bluff or finding an empty seat on a crowded subway. It's that rewarding. So how do you go about unmasking these secrets? Well, it all starts with observing carefully. In the hustle and bustle of everyday life, we often overlook to just sit back and analyze our surroundings. This isn't about going on some detective adventure or launching a full-scale investigation. No, this is about those little moments those casual hangouts, those regular interactions, those times when you're just talking, doing nothing significant, and yet everything seems to be revealing. Next up, listening to their narratives. Now, I ain't talking about the time they gossiped about their neighbor. I mean those narratives that expose their true selves, their real attitudes, the ones that seem to have a hidden agenda or a negative undertone, the ones that are so them, they couldn't possibly belong to anyone else. Understanding these narratives not only helps you identify a potential hater, but also helps you know their real intentions. And finally, engaging in social activities. I'm not talking about those 
formal company get-togethers, I mean real fun social activities like a game of pool in the club or a cookout at the beach or even a simple game of cards. These activities not only help you interact more but also reveal hidden facets of their characters. So there you have it, the secret recipe to unlocking the secrets of recognizing a hater. And remember, it's not about being paranoid or too suspicious. It's about being observant, about being patient, about knowing people better. So keep an eye out for that counterfeit bill because when you spot it, you'll understand people on a whole new level. Hatred isn't necessarily a destructive force. Rather, it's like a lightning storm. A little bit can electrify your life, but too much can wreak havoc. But what if that storm is quietly brewing due to a friend? Let's learn how to exploit this hatred for good. Consider the occasional tension between you and those you're closest to, which propels everyone to continuously evolve. Visualize yourself in an impromptu debate with your friends. Everyone's vying to outwit each other, right? That's where the camaraderie gets ignited. That's where you encourage each other to grow smarter, to push boundaries, to aim further. Sparks the perseverance. It's all part of the spirited competition. Now, carry this same energy into your tight-knit circle. You've got your crew, your closest allies, your ride or dies. Just like in that spontaneous debate, everyone's aspiring to be the sharpest to outsmart each other in a sporting way. No one's trying to annihilate their buddy, just nudging them a bit, pushing them out of their comfort zone. Remember the Tesla and Edison rivalry? When they were producing groundbreaking innovations, one after the other. That rivalry wasn't about outshining each other, it was about crafting something remarkable, something that would withstand time. It was about motivating each other to reach their full potential. So, reflect on this. A little tension among friends, a hint of hatred isn't necessarily harmful. It's like adding a spark to your crew's dynamic. It makes things lively, keeps it intriguing. It can stimulate, inspire, and drive your crew to accomplish what seemed unattainable. But be wary, too much lightning and you might blow a fuse. Keep things friendly, keep it light. Don't let the hatred escalate into a full-fledged conflict. So inject dose of rivalry into your crew dynamics. Just remember to have a circuit breaker at hand in case things get too intense. So what's the ultimate goal in dealing with haters? Well, it's not about who's got the most clapbacks or the wittiest comebacks. It's about recognizing their negativity and addressing it with grace. Let's delve into the real secret to navigating haters' tactics. Now you might be wondering, do I need to be as cool as Drake or as fierce as Taylor Swift to deal with haters? Nah, you don't need to be a superstar. Just be genuine. The ultimate goal in dealing with haters isn't about the show and bravado, it's about resilience. That's right, I'm talking about that strength that comes when you've walked through the fire together, when you've overcome obstacles, when you've supported each other, regardless of the negativity. Imagine this. You're in the middle of a presentation and someone undermines you and you're about to lose your cool. But then, who steps in with a calm response that turns the situation around? Your ally. Now, that's overcoming an obstacle. That's resilience. And that, my friends, is the ultimate goal in dealing with haters. And let's not overlook mutual respect. That's the foundation of your support system. You might not always agree with everything. But at the end of the day, you respect each other's journey. You value the hard work. You understand that everyone has their own battles, their own ambitions, and their own hurdles. And that's fine because respect the backbone of dealing with haters. But remember, dealing with haters isn't about being all stiff and solemn. It's about enjoying life, laughing it off, and creating unforgettable moments. It's about those thrilling adventures, those spontaneous trips, and those impromptu jam sessions. It's about experiencing life to its fullest, fullest together. So, the ultimate goal dealing with haters, it's not about who's the best, it's about supporting each other through ups and downs, insults and interference, triumphs and trials. And that, my friends, is the real secret to navigating haters. Remember, remember, if you had a hearty laugh and picked up some valuable insights, go ahead and hit that like button and subscribe for more wisdom. Stay genuine.